Hi, Keith here with a new series of videos on the free statistical program PAST, P-A-S-T. Why a series of videos on PAST and why a new series? Well, as some people know, I've done some videos on using PAST, but they cover only a selected range of what's available. And these videos might not cover some of the techniques that people might find useful. So this new series is going to look at some of the more commonly used statistical met methods and how they're implemented in PAST. And one reason for doing this is, as you can see from the website here, PAST does an awful lot of things. And the authors are quite proactive in adding in new capabilities and adding in some of the latest types of statistical analyses such as Anasim, MPM Manover and others. So first of all this is the website where you can download PAST and get the manual. The manual is also constantly being updated and revised and it's not always up to date with the program itself. And this is a Windows program. It requires no installation. It runs as downloaded. So you can run it from a USB stick if you want. Once started, it looks like this. And here are a couple of the reasons why I'm doing this series of videos. It has quite a large range of some conventional statistical procedures, correlations, F and T tests, some standard non-parametric procedures, Mann-Whitney, Wilcoxon, Anovers. It also has a very large array of multivariate procedures, including some of those that are most commonly used today. So there's a set of ordination techniques up here, including principal components and non-metric MDS and also PCO principal coordinates. It's got cluster analysis. It's got some of the newer methods for testing hypotheses in multivariate data sets such as Anasim and MP Manova. It would be hard to find an equivalent array of methods in any other package, let alone one that is free and relatively small. Now what it lacks is some of the polish of the um, more expensive and better produced packages and particularly in the graphing area but many people will be able to do the graphs they need in something such as Excel so that's not such a major limitation. Now in the remainder of this video I'm just going to talk a little bit about the data sets that I'll be using and I'll refer back to this video in later videos. Now the data I'm using here are simulated and they come from a simulation of a marine benthic soft bottom environment. It slopes from about 25 meters deep to about 75 meters deep here you're looking at one of the simulated profiles and it goes from fairly coarse sandy sediments up the top shallower end to finer silty, siltier muddy sediments down the lower end. It also has pollution and it's actually developed for classroom studies looking at environmental impact assessment. So in particular there are three oil platforms here which are leaking oil at the bottom and that oil is being carried by the current south and becoming incorporated in the bottom sediments. Now the data that I get from this simulation looks like this. Um, over here I've got a set of four environmental variables that are measured on the samples and these samples will be collected using a corer digging into the bottom or a grab sampler. So I've got the depth at which the sample is taken, the sediment particle size, the 
nutrients, so a measure of nutrients, nutrients such as NP or organic carbon, and hydrocarbons, the actual pollution. So those are environmental variables. And then across here, there are counts of the numbers of various macroinvertebrates that are found in the sediments. And they're for three main groups, crustaceans, mollusks, and lastly, on the side, worms. Um, in the files as well, I may have various categorical or indicator variables. Um, so I've got X and Y here, these are the coordinates at which the sample is taken, replicate number, um, the group, which I'll come back to in a moment, and a couple of other codes here which I'll talk more about when they're needed for PAST. Now, to illustrate some of the different features of PAST, I've set up a few different data designs and sampling schemes. So the first one here is a fairly standard comparison with two factors, control versus impact and location. So there, these are the locations of the three platforms. I'm only sampling the two southern ones and I've got samples on the western side and samples on the eastern side. So that's one of my factors and the other is control, sorry, control taken out here or impact taken right next to the platform where it's leaking. So we've got two impact and two control, or matched paired impact and control. So that's my CVI, control versus impact design. My next design is a fairly standard transect type of arrangement. I've got two transects running from north to south or shallow to deep over to the side here where there's likely to be relatively little pollution. So that's my transect data set. And then finally, I've got a set of samples here taken randomly all over the map uh, in the way that I might do if I was trying to just randomly sample through the area in order to look at how environmental conditions and how the biology varied through that environment. And that's my map data set. So these are the three sets of data I'll be using because, as I say, some are more appropriate for particular kinds of analyses than others. Now this video is running to about eight minutes and I want to keep them all fairly short to five to ten minutes so they're all going to focus on just one or a few aspects of PAST.